This episode of Action with Podcast is brought to you by our gold partner, A Star Financial Solutions UK, who'll support you on your journey to expand your property portfolio. Thanks to our silver partner, TapTap Send, with great rates, zero fee, and instant transfers, sending money to Nepal has never been easier. Use the code Action10 for a ten pound bonus. Download the app today. Tap tap and send now. Big mention to our silver partner, New Lakshmi Jewelers, home to a stunning range of jewelry collection and timeless pieces from the heart of Aldershot. Our bronze partners, Nepal Authentic Dining, where delicious Nepali food is served at Shepherd's Bush and Boston Manor, and our bronze partner, Nepali Music Festival UK 2022, taking place at the Harrow Leisure Centre on December 16 with Trishna Gurung, Ekdev Limbu, Sabin Rai, and the Pharaoh. Enjoy the episode. Welcome to another episode of Action With, uh, the podcast presented by A Star Financial Solutions UK. And today on the podcast, I have with me Janita Pandak. Welcome to the show, Janita. Thanks. Hey, bro. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I was going to leave that for a little later, but um, Janita happens to be my sister as well. So if you are listening and um, and not watching, then yes, um, I have my sister with me on the podcast um, and um, we're going to be talking about what she does. Um, you're a solicitor, but uh, if you could kind of give a quick uh, introduction, uh, what do you do? What do you specialize in? um i'm hi everyone i'm janita i'm lexa's sister <laughs> just in case you didn't know um i basically i am a solicitor um lawyer in in um in london so i'm a city lawyer i i do i specialize in real estate i do commercial real estate so what that involves is buying selling of commercial properties uh finance when companies um when companies um, finance their assets. Um, so I do um, finance their assets to purchase more assets. So I do that. Uh, what else? A uh, bit of a construction, residential development, um, leases, office leases. Yeah. Or basically anything and everything, everything to do with commercial real estate. Um, yeah, I'm based in London. And yeah, that's it. That's so a good chunk of your work, because you mentioned that... Um, you help people buy more properties and so on. Yeah. It's you help individuals to, I guess, um, um, maximize their assets. Yes, pretty much. So um, our clients are predominant, predominantly in investors. We work, we, I mean, we do act for um, a small number of individuals, but it's mainly work, work for corporate entities. Um, so yeah, they invest a lot um, just across the UK, not just London. So they buy, um, yeah, or mixed use um, offices, like mm -hmm. mixed use buildings, sorry. So, so with offices on top, um, like retail uh, on the bottom, uh, they build new homes, new yeah. build homes. So if, you, if you're seeing all these new, new build properties across the UK, so I probably would have been involved in some of those. Uh, there was a lot more in Kent that I was part of. Um, yeah, so pretty much, yeah, just help people buy assets. <laughs> so law is, um, you know, such a big umbrella. It's a big term as well, because you've mentioned that you focus on commercial property. A lot of people from um, backgrounds similar to ours would probably be more familiar with immigration law, and they may have worked with solicitors and lawyer, um, yeah, people yeah, yeah. who are working on their cases. So I just wanted to ask, like, was commercial property or, or, or prop you know, property law something that you always wanted to do? Or how did you kind of end up in this um, strand of law? I suppose uh, property, um, I mean, what I, property generally, I mean, first, I, I suppose, uh, you know, like both for all of, for, for most people, the first sort of exposure in terms of property would be a residential property. So I guess um, I've always had that interest in property um, in a sense that it's tangible. So you can see it being built. Um, obviously, there's the, buy, the conveyancing process of buying and selling, but I've always been interested in how especially back home in Nepal, you, you know, like how most people um, um, build lands from scratch. So I've always been interested on the, both the construction and then later on the buying and selling um, aspect of it. But initially it was about how um, people literally buy a bare land and then build homes from scratch. But I wanted, I wanted to know more about um, what you know the stages behind um, the build uh, the planning and everything and when I um, when I went to university that it sort of helped me put things in um, sort of it helped me 
understand it a bit more mm -hmm. and I wanted more of it. So for instance, if, if I give you a sort of, like a simple example, um, here in the UK, so if you want to build build a house, basically you buy a plot of land, um, you get planning from the council. It's like it's like a step by step process, which mm -hmm. really made sense to me. It's logical, and the best thing about property, uh, unlike let's say probably corporate or IP, uh, property is tangible. You can see it being built. So whenever I work on a transaction, it feels like you know it feels amazing, like knowing that um, I mean I've helped this. Uh, investment company uh, this corporate entity uh, build I don't know like 100 or like 200 uh, properties from scratch you can see see the whole estate being built up um, yeah I think that's what led me into property but I guess yeah for most people um, like for, for, for most ordinary people their first sort of exposure you know in terms of law would be immigration mm -hmm. you know especially from our you know the the community that we come in um yeah immigration but then yeah and then our leading on to that residential property cool so you know since graduating from university you've worked in various firms you've worked in now you, you work in commercial but you've worked in non-commercial um uh, law uh, etc before as well so i just yeah. wanted to ask like how is it um working in the law sector um as a woman as a person from um a minority ethnic background um but now like right now your experience is in london but you have worked in places outside of london it's far smaller as well um yes <sighs> Uh, what I would say to that is um, it's getting a lot more diverse now, actually. And also in terms of women representation, I read um, an article recently. There's um, I think there's like more than 60 percent of women in practicing solicitors, women practicing solicitors than men, uh, which I thought was brilliant. But in terms of representation from um, you know other communities, I think we're still lacking, but the, I can see that. A, there's a lot more going on in terms of various schemes um, that certainly city firms are have taken, um, you know, taken part in um, in in the recent years. Uh, when I first started, which is probably four or five years ago, I yes, I did notice that it wasn't as it wasn't as diverse um, as as how it is now. Um, but as I said, it's it's changing. It's changing, and it's it's you know people a lot a lot of the firms. I think they see that as an issue, and they are doing you know they are actively and consciously doing something about it. Um, for myself, in terms of my experience, yes, I think when I first started, I struggled um, to know people, to know more people from our community, um, especially like, you know, legal professionals. I did, I actually did, did not know anyone else apart from, I think I knew about Professor Subadi, Sub but obviously he wasn't, you know, he wasn't from the background we were, Gurkley background. So he wasn't quite accessible to me back then. Um, I, I'm, I've got obviously now over the, over the recent years, I've worked um, with him through BNLA, British and Nepal Lawyers Association. So I've got a close, um, you know, contact with him. But before when I was first starting out, you know, I had no way, no, no, like no way to contact him. And I didn't know anyone else in our community that was in this sector. So yes, but that's changing now. It's like mm. suddenly I've got like whole, whole herd of like Nepalese lawyers friends, which is great. Um, but um, aside from that, um, I have, um, I think the best thing about me was that when I first um, started out in the sector, I had friends from other communities, like Indian friends, Pakistani friends who really helped, um, who really helped me. So, um, yeah, so I think it's, it's, you know, it's getting, getting better. I think the representation. <clears throat> That's great to hear. I, feel, I think sometimes we tend to think that um, support needs to come from people from of the same community or like you know of the same kind of nationality but that's not always the case because no, there yeah. are friends from different bi backgrounds as well who whose communities may have been um uh, may have experienced something similar to ours as well and we can always tap into the wider south asian network um and you know people from different um parts of the world um you touched on bnla so yeah. that's britain nepal law 
Lawyers Association. Lawyers Association. Yeah. Um, so there, <clears throat> there's quite a lot of people um, in BNLA, people from um, kind of people with Gurkha heritage and people from non-Gurkha heritage as well. Mm-hmm. Um, in the past few years, um, I've also noticed that whenever um, various Nepali online publications do a shout out on, you know, Nepali people who are um, in, now qualified by, is it the something of law? I don't know. Or basically yeah. someone who's like a solicitor and so on. Yeah. I tend to see more younger Nepali women um, pursuing this line of work yeah. uh, in comparison to like um, a, a young Nepali man and so on. Um, is that a fair observation from my side or what's the consensus from your kind of um, observation? So, do you mean from the younger generation? Yeah, like someone oh. who's like freshly out of university, twenty like between 21 to 28. I feel like there's more Nepali women in that kind of spectrum, studying law, coming out, graduating and so on. Um, I, th- I think so. That's probably a fair assessment. Yeah, I think in the recent years, um, certainly like I know more uh, Nepali female lawyers than... Uh, than Nepali male law- lawyers mm-hmm. um, that sort of grew up in the UK. But mm. uh, as a whole, the organisation itself, we have more uh, Nepal qualified lawyers as opposed to UK qualified lawyers. But yeah, I think there's more women as opposed to men generally. Yeah, which is always good to see. Yeah. yeah. So I want to ask as well, for um, whether you're in corporate, whether you're in residential or um, uh, labor and, and so on, etc. Um, what are some of the skills that you think um, helps when you're in this line of work? Um, whether it could be people's skills, like your personality or, you know, things that could help you uh, in, in the early years of your kind of... I suppose to do the job, to the job itself, I feel like you have to be curious. You have to be um, really... I hate this word passionate about law in general. Um, well, certainly the, the the area that you're doing in because there's other work because you're going to be doing that every day um, in and out. So you need, to, I feel like you need to have a curious mind. Um, I think, yeah, for curious mind, but in terms of the, the job itself, as long as like, as long as you're prepared to work hard, uh, you know, it's, it's not that hard. <laughs> it's not that hard. I probably didn't, yeah, probably didn't feel like that when I was seeing my exams. But I don't think it's that hard. Um, I mean, it is hard. Obviously, there are certain challenges. But I'd say as long as you have a curious mind, you can you can do, you know, your, I think that's all you need. And also, yes, on the side, you need to have a good interpersonal skills because a lot of what we do is talking to clients, um, talking to, um, especially if you're working on, um um like a big deal you have like 10 or 15 lawyers from different departments so you need to be able to you know communicate um effect effectively and also there's drafting as well your english mm-hmm. written has to be pretty pretty on point but i you know it as a whole i just i just i just you know i, I would just say if you just have a curious mind like the like the like the hunger f- to learn yeah. um, new things every day because especially like the type of work that I do, I just don't do like one type of area. I do like, I'm you know, I do a bit of finance, a bit of uh, leases, contracts. Uh, I do corporate support as well. So it's, it's every, you know, it's because I'm really interested in what I do. So for me, and also I have a curious mind. I'm, I always want to know, oh, you know, how about this? How about this? And, and also, again you know going back to commercial property again um i like working um with different type of buildings and mm-hmm. also different type of like different like corporate entities as well so for instance if there's a charity company you know i would like to know like why they're acquiring that you know that piece of like that space that office space like why that location so it's like a general having that general like curiosity and mm-hmm. interest i think so was um, law something that you always wanted to do when you were younger as well, like when you were in kind of school? Oh, I was um, thinking about this the other day, actually. Um, and somebody asked me that. Weirdly, I've never had somebody ask me that in my interviews mm-hmm. when going for jobs. But as a, like during like conversations with friends, somebody asked me that recently. And I quite I didn't quite know how to answer it because do you remember i mean have i ever spoke do you remember much about me talk talk about what you wanted to be yeah i don't No, i, I yeah <laughs> it's sort of just like fell into like i know that um yeah. i don't I know think that... I've, I, don't, I don't think i've ever grew up saying oh i wanted to do law i wanted to be a lawyer I don't but think... equally i don't remember you saying you wanted to do or be something because Any, i remember kopila saying that like, she wanted to like do something around like 
uh, she was into space at one point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or she was like into helping people. But it's like, always about helping people. Helping she was people. always she very. Was, yeah. But from you, I don't just don't remember. I just because I've always been very practical and practical in a sense that you know you need money <laughs> mm-hmm. to get by in life, and I've always, you know. I've always been inclined towards wanting to live a very comfortable life. And mm. I thought that law uh, was something that would give me, uh, <laughs> give me that. And also, I think that was one of the reasons why I switched over to uh, law uh, during my A-levels, because initially I was doing something else. I think I did history or in- and English Lit and Lang. And then I switched across to um, A-level law just because um, I, was, I think at that stage, I must, must have been watching a lot of um, TV shows um law-based tv shows and i saw the glitz and glam um and i think that sort of attracted to attracted me to law uh, sorry law at that stage but yeah i think it's because i'm quite practical and also i wanted something you know again like that would give me a comfortable life um Mm -hmm. and something that i could really um picture and understand uh, something's a bit more black and white. Yeah. Yeah. It's something tangible. Yeah. So yeah. Um, your your kind of interest and curiosity for commercial property law is really coming through. Yeah. And I was just wondering, because in certain sectors, you know, you do have that gift of knowing that if you work in this sector for X, Y, Z years, you're going to head to this level in terms of your career progression and so on. So what's the kind of career progression goal for you? Is there kind of like a top line um, uh, kind of role that you're aspiring towards or working towards? I'd love to be a partner, but I... I... And can you <laughs> explain to our listeners what, what exactly is a partner or oh, where, where partner. a partner sits? So in terms of hierarchy, you do um, obviously go to law school and then you do a two-year training uh, which is a graduate scheme. It's, um, it's two years. Um, you're a trainee solicitor at that stage. Once you qualify, you're a solicitor. Uh, in my firm, in terms of the um, setup, we've got as soon as you qualify, you're a solicitor, you're a junior solicitor, and then it goes up to associate, and then there's a senior associate, and then you become a legal director. And partner is like the top, like the top, um, the top role that you can attain in a law firm. So um, I've, my, what, in terms of what I want to do in the future, I'm not entirely sure if I do want to stay in the legal sector, but certainly in the next couple of years or so, yes, definitely. Um, I'm not, I don't aspire to be a partner because it's probably sound, don't sound, I probably don't sound very ambitious, but um, it's a lot of hard work. And also with partner, there is that um, added um, responsibility of bringing in, having to bring in clients, having to bring in um, deals, which I don't necessarily like, though I do like BD, business development. I do like like bringing in, uh, talking to people, talking to clients, potential clients, mm-hmm. you know, s- sussing them out. And also I think I'm sort of borderline extrovert in a sense that I'm a people's people I like talking to people I you know I get energy from you know from good people around me but I just I can see that being so draining if I had to do that you know as the main aspect of my job Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um because I do really like enjoy being a lawyer I, I you know I like my deals I like you know I like the fact that I go in I just work on my deals and then the BD side is just on the side but if I had to do that as a main I'm probably not so much um so I think at this moment in time I'm probably just aiming for senior associate Mm -hmm. yes and possibly a legal legal director I'm not sure but I think a senior I'd I'd be quite happy if I just got to that level yeah yeah but I don't know I don't know who knows what look in the next couple of years I might I might think oh I need money so I have to go for the partnership yeah I mean it looks like there's quite a few options but you also mentioned that who knows that you, you might not be doing law like you know long time in the future um so i just wanted to ask obviously um not really specific but is there anything else like if you know do you is there any kind of thought like oh if i wasn't doing law then i'd like to do this or i'd like to kind of pursue this and so on not really not really this is something that i've been thinking about as well because for me if i wasn't doing law i'm not sure if i i'm not sure i'd do anything else but i think when uh, that comment that i made um and who knows i might not, not be doing law um in a sense that i probably want to take a break <laughs> okay cool 
I meant in terms of sabbatical, but yeah. I don't think I can see myself doing anything else except law. Yeah. Um, I can see myself um, branching out to other areas within the legal sector, but I think law, because I really enjoy what I do, um, and uh, for most people, it's probably about money. I mean, certainly for me, it's about money as well, but f for me, it's more about the fact that I really enjoy what I do and then obviously the money helps. Mm -hmm. So, so yes, yeah, so, so I probably for, wouldn't like step away from it completely. Yeah, for a young person or like yeah. let's say a young Gen Z or someone who's trying to pick like what to study, et cetera, and law and stuff, would you say that doing law will help them lead a comfortable life in the UK or in London, especially now in, in light of like the inflation and the cost of the crisis and so on? Um, That's... I mean, generally, I would say so, but it all it's very area specific. So, for instance, I, I'm not entirely sure about other sectors. I think it varies with crim, uh, criminal and immigration. I, I'm told that the money isn't as, um, you know, great um, as it should be. Uh, you know, as it should be, because, you know, the uh, immigration and crime lawyers and certainly human rights lawyers, they do amazing jobs. Uh, but I, I have heard that it's not as well paid um, as, for instance, uh, corporate lawyers, IP lawyers and stuff. Um, real estate, I think we're not bad. Yeah, we're not bad in terms of, you know, the salaries and stuff. Um, yes, certainly if you obviously, you know, if you p decide to pursue a, a career in corporate IP and even real estate you know it, it, it yes it would be you know it can be comfortable and also you know it depends on what type of you know who you who you work for you know there are some big big firms in the city that pay that can pay handsomely mm -hmm. in, in, in the sectors that I've mentioned yeah yeah you talked about um, a possible sabbatical as well so I just wanted to ask like in terms of when you're not working because um, people in the law sector depending on the line of work they have long hours that they're doing and so on how are the different things okay what are the different ways that you kind of like let your hair down um <laughs> that's <laughs> that's that's tricky because I haven't been that productive outside of what, like like non-legal stuff it's usually well, well how I let my head out is usually a lot of drinking <laughs> a lot mm -hmm. of social socializing um but yeah I go for runs mm -hmm. I think running really helps mentally um as well as physically um but yeah just spending time with friends and family I've just I've, I, I think I lead a pretty pretty standard life in terms of I don't do much yeah. Yeah, I don't do much like as, as outside of law. I think we just we have a lot of like family times. We go tra we travel together. Um yeah. Um you've also been to obviously in our family we have a bit of a competition in terms of the country count. So oh, yeah. I'm still stuck on 29. So that's the number of countries that I've visited. I think um, I've done 36. So you're on country 36. Yeah. So yeah, you've been to quite a lot of countries. Yeah. Um so I just wanted to ask is like you know what's been okay if you have to what's a highlight what's a memory that you can vividly remember from the trips that you've done if you can share one um i think one of the best trips i've had so far um it's probably kenya so mm -hmm. we went um as a family we went to kenya in june yeah. july this year so that was amazing because i'd never been to central africa is kenya east africa, east africa, but africa yeah, sorry like, yeah. yeah like africa africa i'd gone to sure i've gone to, gone to egypt um and morocco but that's a different landscape um yeah so kenya was amazing um the safari i thought was absolutely brilliant different landscape food as well and also i was so shocked about um the diversity in, in Nairobi I, that really fascinated me and I've since coming back I've been doing a lot of reading um, on Kenya and Uganda certainly like Kenyan in, uh, Asians and mm -hmm. Ugandan Asians and I'm, I'm also I just like quick, quickly mention I'm part of this book club with um, uh, Asian Women's Lawyers Association UK and we have a book club so the book that we read recently it's called um, oh my god I forgot the name now but it's um, about this lawyer. Mm -hmm. He is British. He's British Indian. Mm -hmm. And his parents are from Uganda. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So they moved over here when the uh, Ugandan Asians got expelled. Uh, post, um, you know, post, um, post UK. Yeah. 
something exit. that happened yeah. yes post uk exit <laughs> yeah. so that was very interesting and also th that you know f following that book we spoke a lot about the whole you know british colony yeah. uh, african asian so i thought kenya was amazing and i'd love to go back mm. and um weirdly i've been meeting a lot of kenyan indians in london mm -hmm. yeah a lot How of indian friends with kenyan heritage yeah. so i i'm just really interested um in kenya and also uganda so i think yeah. kenya was like one of like probably one of the best trips because it was so different from any other countries I've been to in the past. Yeah. You mentioned yeah. Um, the book club and I yeah. just wanted to ask, you know, I think uh, one of the things about working in the law sector is you have to have, not not you have to have, but I feel like having that personality and that ability to connect with different people can take you further. Um, so I wanted to ask how important is networking in this sector, in this field and yeah. how much have you done that and what's your take on it? I think I, in my early years, I was a serial networker, but now not so much because um, I've been pretty la lazy in the past um, in the past months or so. I, it's something that I need to pick it up again. I think I could, I've got to the stage where I'm a bit more comfortable, a bit more settled. Obviously, you know, I've got a bit more experience, a bit more years of experience. So I've, I'm just hibernating at the moment so it needs to be reactivated at some stage but yeah certainly in my initial years I was a serial networker and that's that helped me a lot um I, you know, as you know um when I initially qualified I, qu I qualified in a different area um called occupational disease mm -hmm. so it wasn't I'd never I'd never done property before but usually when you um qualify into um a certain area you have to have done it as part of your training contract so I hadn't done any any property during my training contract um, and all I knew at that stage when I was qualifying into occupational diseases that I would it, it, it's an area it's an area that definitely interested me but I couldn't see myself doing it for for years and years which you know which is what I can see you know commercial property I can yeah. see myself doing commercial property for years um, but with occupational disease I couldn't see myself there, I just felt like there was no longevity in terms of mm -hmm. like the interest and so on but I did enjoy it when I was doing it yeah so um yes so I knew it was something that wasn't for me yeah so I think what I did was um I had to basically find somebody who would give me a job without having had any prior experience in real estate property so that's what that's when uh, a lot of the networking that I did really helped because um, with um, with organizations like, uh, you know, Asian Women's Lawyers Association, I made friends, lots of Asian friends um, from real estate property mm -hmm. backgrounds. Um, I, I was part of Society of Asian Lawyers, too. Um, I actually attended loads of events um, for with um, organized by um, Chinese lawyers, lawyers as well. And lots of like random um, networking events organized by the Law Society um, here and there. So that really helped me in terms of I knew I was interested in real estate property, but I wanted to, to know how to go, how to get myself in there without having had any experience. Mm -hmm. Welcome to A Star, your complete financial solution. The A stands for first class service and the star relates to you. Our most important clients. We are a team of whole market advisors with more than 10 years of excellent service. Serving nationwide, we specialized in home mortgages and remortgages, wills and estate planning, residential sales and lettings, property management, real estates, insurances and pensions for both personal and business financial advices. Please, feel free to contact us for consultant. We look forward to working with you. A Star Financial Solution. Making your move memorable. This episode of Action With Podcast is brought to you by our gold partner, A Star Financial Solutions UK, who'll support you on your journey to expand your property portfolio. Thanks to our silver partner, TapTap Tap Send. With great rates, zero fee, and instant transfers, sending money to Nepal has never been easier. Use the code ICHIN10 for a £10 bonus. Download the app today. Tap Tap and Send now. 
Big mention to our silver partner, New Luxme Jewelers, home to a stunning range of jewelry collection and timeless pieces from the heart of Aldershot. Our bronze partners, Nepal Authentic Dining, where delicious Nepali food is served at Shepherd's Bush and Boston Manor. And our bronze partner, Nepali Music Festival UK 2022, taking place at the Harrow Leisure Center on December 16 with Trishna Gurung, Ekdev Limbu, Sabin Rai and the Pharaoh. Enjoy the episode. I wanted to ask as well, um, in terms of like, you know, there's... Uh, a lot of changes in your career in terms of, you know, different places that you've had to move to for work. Um, what's been the thing that's really gotten you by, whether it's like a um, who's been supportive or what has that thing? It could be a non-person thing as well. That's kind of just kept you going. Um, or it could be yourself because, you know, we don't have to always thank other people. Yeah, no, obviously family, family. Um, also, when I was switching over from occupational disease to property, I took a you know big pay cut, and you know I was living at home. So you know the fact that I was I had this um, stable home. Um, our parents have always been so supportive. So yeah, no parents. I think without parents' help, I don't think I'd be able to get this far. And also, I think yeah, I think. Um, yeah, you know, our dad, like, he's the one who's who constantly pushes me, like, to do better, mm -hmm. to do to do better. I mean, he's, he's set the benchmark so high. I constantly wanna, I constantly think about him. Sometimes, even when I'm feeling lazy at work, I'm or I'm, if I'm thinking, oh my god, I was thinking about it the other day. I was like, okay, should, do I really want to be a partner? I'm like, sure, I think I do. My dad would love for me to be a partner because he's done so much. So I, yeah, I think it's probably mum and dad. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Nice. Um, yeah. Is there kind of like, um, what's been like the most challenging thing about your life? Um, it doesn't even have to be like career related. Oh, the most challenging thing. That you can share, obviously. Oh, the most challenging thing. I, pop, I haven't, I mean, there's been like small amounts of challenges here mm -hmm. and there, but I haven't had a huge challenge challenge okay if you yeah. can like okay then what about like the the small things that you mentioned what yeah. are they in terms of like themes has, has it been more about kind of decision making identity or like you know um i don't know money <laughs> um i mean identity uh, not so much because i think obviously there's that uh, it's sort of like it's a small facet mm -hmm. so like identity obviously we all struggle with the whole notion of identities you know given our backgrounds but it's not a huge part of you know what I, 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 I suppose it should be now when I think about it but for me I'm just a person mm -hmm. and you know here are my likes and dislikes and so on and obviously yes my identity like my background you know he's a huge part of me but um no not so much actually I mean I don't see for me challenge is such a heavy word so I it's I, uh, yeah that's good that's yeah. fine yeah. Um, what are some things that you know like obviously um you're working you've been working for a while now what are some things that keep making you like you know this is why i'm doing this um that keep you going um i guess the thirst of wanting to live a comfortable life as mm -hmm. as as um yeah as bad as it may sound mm -hmm. um yeah i mean yeah I think it's just that just just to want to live a comfortable life and just enjoy you know the finer things that the that, that life has to offer I guess that's keeping me going and also my interest in what I do and also you know this is a, you know uh, just spend more time with family yeah mm -hmm. um during the pandemic you yeah. and friends I believe started a um, small network for yes, younger did. people yes. um, getting into law um, or who are already in law yeah. as well um, I just wanted to ask like how did that go and um, do you see that being something that you will continue um, over the next couple of years um, yes, about that. It's been put on hold for now. It's hibernating as with all my other networking, <laughs> uh, uh, networking things. Um, yes, we started, it's, um, it's, a, it, it's called Young Lawyers, yeah, no, UK Nepal Lawyers, Nepal Lawyers, 
I believe. Yeah, sorry. I've just, it's sort of been put on hold for now. Yeah, so we started out during the pandemic. So it went quite well, actually. Um, we had a couple of Zooms, mm -hmm. um, uh, socials. Um, so we met um, other young Nepalese lawyers um, and also those those interested in pursuing law. Um, so that's a good, yeah, it was a good way, good platform to meet other people. Um, I've met a couple of um, people from there in person. Mm -hmm. uh the last couple of months um so yeah it, I, I though we could do more uh it's just the finding it's just finding the right time for it i've just been busy with work and life generally yeah definitely so, i mean yeah. work takes five days of our week and yeah. you know we have one day for our i don't know social friends etc and mm -hmm. one day for ourselves and that's weekend all gone mm -hmm. um so completely understandable on a personal note i also wanted to ask like you know a lot of the times um as women not just in law but women progress on women master their career and so on there's always that you know and there's that pressure for women to kind of juggle multiple roles and um i guess identities and so on whether that's being um a partner being a partner as in the sense of being um you know married and so mm -hmm. on and then there's motherhood if some people decide to um follow that or just starting some sort of a family even with a dog etc and so mm -hmm. on um i wanted to ask you because you um you know you're in your kind of early 30s and, and so on and you know living in the community that we are um or even in a non-Nepali setting most people start thinking about you know what's my future going to look like and so mm -hmm. on um how much have you had to think about that now that you're kind of um in in that kind of age zone where i'm assuming friends and Everyone's other getting, people are yeah. getting kind of settling down even though i don't really like, like that term set, settling yeah. down um it's um, it's something that i'm not actively thinking about but obviously it's all is in the back of our back of my head because obviously we I would come from this community so you can't really get away from it completely um to be honest I don't really think about it as much I think for me um right now is just like um I love what I do so I'm really you know I'm a good, good in a good space I want to do more of it I want to learn new things within the real estate um uh, within the real estate se sector so that's my fo that's my main focus and priority at the moment but obviously yes uh, in the back of my head I do think oh yes perhaps you know I need to really think about um, those things um, uh, it is some something that I am thinking about but I don't really you know, if it happens, it happens. If it doesn't, then I'm okay because I've got a lot going on right now. Um, I don't really want to, I don't, I'm only going to, I'm only, obviously I, I would love to get married. I know I would love to find, you know, the, the one to settle down with or have kids and stuff, but um, I'll only do it if it sort of complements my life. Mm -hmm. You know, I I wouldn't just settle down just for the sake of settling down. Mm. Um, but yeah, it's I know it sounds probably yeah, yeah. It's it's not it's not a priority. Yeah, it's not a priority for me. My job is a priority because I love in, like do like I love like what I do. So yeah, yeah. And thankfully, our parents are quite calm about it that's true no i think that's yeah definitely i think that's how we should proceed forward like unless, and also our unless... dad is very different in the sense that like, i think he would he'd, he'd prefer me to do masters he'd study prefer me more, to get a phd enjoy, yeah as the opposed world, to than get married, get married. Kids. yeah never like we're, like yeah never said I never settled down for the sake of finding yeah. that person because we're, I'm worried about being lonely. Yeah, I, you know, I deal with it when that happens. But unless I find somebody who will, like you said, yeah. compliment, I think we find somebody who compliments and makes the, the us greater. Yeah, and then, then yes, we'll we'll marry. Yeah, or weirdly, whatever. I was having this conversation with mum, with mum the other day, and my mum's like, "Oh, it's fine. You've still got you're, you're in your early thirties. You've got a bit of time. Maybe like set, like look towards settling down in your late thirties." And dad like echoed the same sentiment and you know and i thought oh my god our parents are amazing my dad was like you know how dad he's like mm -hmm. oh why don't you do like study more why don't you do a phd why like you know you'll yeah. have that doctor title i'm like oh gosh <laughs> yeah so yeah. yeah no um 
yeah it's that's good yeah that's good um obviously we've talked about like commercial property law and amplifying assets and so on um so i just wanted to kind of give a big shout out to our gold partner a star financial solutions and real estates because you can get in touch with them if you want to uh get support for anything managing your assets uh remortgaging and um expanding that property portfolio um mm. right now there's a lot of people in the uk um with side hustles and things that they have on the side um or things that they'd like to do and i just wanted to ask if you've got anything on the side or anything that you'd like to do in the future i don't i'm not sure if i've got any side hustle no <laughs> i don't think i do mm. i mean we've got um we've got we have a couple, couple of buy to let Mm-mm. properties so i suppose that could be seen as a side hustle but mm. other than that it's nothing active n- no active side hustle jobs but yeah i guess in in the future i don't know if i've told you but i've always wanted to open a, open my own cafe yeah. yeah yeah so i've told you about that haven't i because uh-huh. i'm into cakes <laughs> i love all things sweets um and coffees and stuff i'm such can a- you specify to our listeners in terms of in this vision do yeah. you see yourself as the person who really plants the vision and and kind of funds it or, or brings funding or do you see yourself actually making the cakes and oh, selling the no, cakes no 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 that's a negative um no i mean i'll probably be the person behind the funding the you know management stuff um but not baking i think i ugh, no one would want, want to come to my cafe but yeah that's something it's that, because she cannot bake well <laughs> yeah, I cannot it's, bake. she's not saying that baking is a bad profession oh no no by the baking way. is a yeah. good profession we, i would we have love a cake, to... we have a cake like every week in our house <laughs> yeah, and yeah. we'd love a personal baker in-house yes, personal baker yeah no i would that's love to know how yeah. to bake well i am absolutely bad at baking and cooking general generally but um no that's something that i actually have been thinking about i want to have my own cafe not in the uk probably back home in nepal um yes so that's sort of the Mm. long-term gain i mean again i don't want to do it full time it's probably just something on the side uh yeah yeah something that's like a fun side project yes which doesn't eat your brains um i also wanted to ask like you're quite um visible on social media you post lots of things lots of content i think at once uh, at one point in your life there was a blog called lawyer's cheek or something or like you know these are the law professionals showing oh it's know, like a like, fancy lie yeah, 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 yeah something like that but basically yeah. like you know yeah. somebody just amplified your um instagram and so on so i just wanted to ask on instagram i'm sure um there's a lot of people that comment or ask you questions yeah um, what are some of the things that you think um uh people have in terms of misconceptions about you um oh probably probably that the legal profession get uh, get you know lawyers get paid a lot of money i mean yes certainly we do yes probably it's like way above the market rate yes uh way above like a normal sorry average job but um yeah but not as much as bankers i think mm-hmm. um yes i'm always people ask me um questions people i get random dms on instagram saying oh which um, area sh- like pays the most <laughs> Oh, okay. i'm like oh okay <laughs> like it's not like uh, you know should i you know i'm interested in this area or you know what how do i go about it or like which area um pays the most um yeah it's usually money related mm-hmm. and i suppose you know being visible on social media and a lot of my pictures are f- from us traveling or usually from me drinking um you know like eating out and stuff so i probably it probably gives them that um that perception that yeah you know the the life i lead is you know very glam but you know i you know we do really work hard for it mm-hmm. so and again there are other other jobs that are that pay much more um i don't know in terms of uh, misconceptions i think it's usually just about the finances i think people are really curious about the finance Mm-hmm. obviously rightly so because you want to know like what you're going into yeah but often it's just bad finances but other than that not not so much and also i think um p- 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 because i'm constantly uh, like out and about people do think people probably don't think that i work as much <laughs> people think <laughs> yeah. it's li- as law is literally 95 but it's not always the case yeah yeah i guess there are late nights there are early mornings yeah. and there are sometimes when it's just 
continuous reading and and prepare yeah um prepping up but i guess um like you said the past year or so you've got into a zone where you're slightly more comfortable and more settled so i guess you know it naturally makes sense that you have more fun and social things going on in your life as well mm-hmm. um what's an advice that you kind of really wished you had gotten when you were younger um what the advice that I could could have should have got when I was younger yeah or yeah like now when you look back at it it's like oh if some if somebody had told me when I was 18 or when I was 15 to xyz and that would have been great no there's nothing (laughs) there's nothing because our dad our parents pretty much cover had it all covered (laughs) they always Uh, said study hard (laughs) they were which i didn't do uh, so yeah i just sort of look back you know how i was during my school years i'll like look back and i think i could have like done better in those subjects and stuff no i think our parents we have well-rounded parents um i think they had it all covered um Mm. no i don't i think i think we've so you you kind of gently kind of implied that you know studies you could have done better. Yeah. Um. Some people may be thinking, oh, she she works in law. She has a good um. She's a, she has a good life. Lots of fun posts and so on. So people may be thinking that you're like straight A students from like GCSEs no. and throughout. Um. But you weren't. Yeah. Obviously, I was. <laughs> so <laughs> what would you say? Much. Like you know, not dwelling too much on the grade, but you know, some people feel like young people feel like um when they don't quite get their A's or like the distinctions or merits um in university that life is over but yeah. what's the reality because clearly you know yes yeah i you mean you can make it yes grades are important obviously <laughs> it's very important so kids study hard um grades are important but i again it comes um again it comes back to networking so because i lacked where i lacked um which is you know i didn't have the a's and <laughs> um that i needed um so that's when my networking um helped because I, as I, you know i'm uh, i'm a people's people um i like meeting people i like talking to people so um yeah so the networking thing really really helped me actually because people often tell me i've got a very good interpersonal skills so that's sort of you know like you know how it is if you get a person if you sort of talk to people Mm -hmm. like try and connect with them and try and you know try and get them on their level get to know them on you know on on their level um they will really open up to you and they will really try and help you as much as just you know trying to help if they like you that is obviously they'll make it happen yeah they'll make it happen for you so that's why i'm so um uh, appreciative of all the people that I've you know I've got in my life because without them I don't, I don't think I would have got, got this far because as you said I didn't have I'm not like the typical A, a students I don't I can't even remember if I got any A's in my GCSEs I probably got one B in my GCSEs and A levels yeah I just got B's and C's uni got two two um that really um closed well I thought that was it I thought Oh, you know, I got a tutu. I wouldn't be able to uh, practice law. But then I met loads of people again through all these networking um, events and stuff um, that told me, no, 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 don't, don't be disheartened by it. You just need to work extra hard, or you just need to know the right people again. Mm. You know, attend all these events. Um, you know, just yeah, just go and see. You know, just go and talk to them. And again, that, uh, I'm going back to what I said about having the curious mind. Um, okay, fine, I didn't have the grades, but then I'm very interested in the subject as a whole. So I think that really helped me. Um, So yeah, yeah. That's incredible. I think, you know, always stay questioning and always find a way because there will be a way. Yes, yeah. And never give up. Um, I mean, you know, your grades are just... um, a moment in your life but they're not like a full stop um you have a very determined like you know a driven personality um mm-hmm. you know in that willingness to get it done as well where does that stem from um 
Do you say, would you say dad? I don't know. I guess partly. Oh, yeah, partly is dad, mm. isn't it? Mm. Um, I guess maybe like 25% that and maybe 75% your own life experiences. And l- like you said, you know, yeah. you, you wanting to prove um, yourself wrong yeah. and continue the chapter when you feel like, actually, is this it? But yeah, you know, yeah, clearly yeah. not. Yeah. yeah. And also, yeah, I'm, I, I know I'm very determined in a sense that I just... I don't know. I just like think like I think sometimes oh, I want to do this. And then I don't think about, oh, the stages like um, I don't think, oh, it's going to be hard. I just want to do it. Mm. I don't know how I, I need I don't know how to get there. I probably at, I mean, it's at some stages, I probably wouldn't even know how to get there, like process and stuff. But I know that I'll get it done mm-hmm. and I'll think about the avenues to get there, you know, later on or as I just as I'm just going along and I guess like a lot of, like a lot of my personality dad and also I think people around me and everyone around us they were, they were you know we are all doing something yeah yeah it's like I'm surrounded by obviously you our sister and friends that are really determined mm. like, oh actually I think um this determined personality may be mum more than dad as well oh, mom dad, dad so, has yeah. a dad has a very pro- practical logical way of doing yeah, things yeah, yeah. but mum has a very like okay she doesn't know how she's gonna get it done yeah, but she so, wants it yeah, she yeah, wants yeah. it yeah. yeah 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 I guess that, I, yeah. In, well I'm very similar to mum so yeah. yeah I'm similar to mum in, in, in that sense so um, I mean, because like growing up, like everyone around us, they're all always doing something. They mm-hmm. always like they all, all they, and they get it done like by hook or crook. So I guess yeah, just people around me um, inspire me, mm-hmm. motivate me. That's great to hear. So thirty six countries in. What are some life goals in terms of travel for you um, in the next few years? I want to do more of Africa. I think we just spoke about earlier, Uganda and Tanzania as well. Um, and more of South, um, uh, well, I haven't been to South America at all. So I want to venture out um, over to South America and Asia as well. I feel like I need, to, I need to do Thailand. I haven't like I'm probably like the only person in the UK <laughs> that haven't been to, um, that hasn't been to Thailand. So yeah, lots of traveling. Hopefully, in the next um, couple of years. Yeah. Great, exciting. Um, I feel like on that, I've kind of lost that race because I'm only in 29. Yeah. Unless, like, in the next twelve months, I kind of really do like a big, massive country, like, yeah, world tour. <sighs> no. Um, interrail. I think that's the only way. I think yeah, that's I think how that's you lost way. out. I think that's how you won yeah, us yeah, yeah, yeah. because I've of that much, European like, trips. All, all the European countries. <laughs> Whereas I was a bit bored of Europe, so I think that's. But anyways, um, that is that. Um, just wanted to say on that note. I mean, um, your career, what you're doing, you know, however that you do it, you get it done. Um, whether you know you um, do it with people or without people whether it's Mm -hmm. work whether it's like the social side of things and so on so it's been great to see you progress in your career um, do other things as well as well as kind of very rapidly challenge your own things and who you are to become a better human being Um, I think we can all do that and we all play a part in our own lives especially Mm -hmm. in in each other's lives Um, so I wish you all the best um, and and more for the career ahead. Um, and I hope for the people listening at home, um, you enjoyed uh, some of the things that she said, um, because I, I believe that there were some really valuable advices there because, um, you know, a, a lot of the times that we may not um, come from a space where we have that ability to kind of uh, articulate what exactly we want in life um, or that ability to net- network as well because of how we've been kind of socially brought up or conditioned. And as, as, I'm shocked about the grades. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and <laughs> you know, the grades and so on as well, that's such a reality because a lot yeah. of us may not have done um, the best at GCSEs, but right now, like, you know, 10, 15 years down the line, doesn't matter. Mm-hmm. Has anyone asked for our kind of transcript and so on? No. No one. I, um, I removed it completely out of my CV. Yeah. So it's like, you know, you, you have to do what you have to do. And, yeah. you know, life is a con- constant um, process and process and you make your own kind of uh, things as you go along. Um, on a final note, do you have any kind of final parting words for people listening to this podcast right now? Um, final parting words, I say stay curious. Stay curious. stay curious and that was Janita Pandak um, talking about her life in law you are listening to Ikchin with um, presented by A Star Financial Solutions and Real Estates UK and this was this is me like Simbu um, thank you so much for listening bye bye everyone bye, thanks. 
This episode is brought to you by our gold partner, A-Star Financial Solutions UK, Silver Partners, Tap Tap Send and New Luxme Jewelers, Bronze Partners, Nepal Authentic Dining and Nepali Music Festival UK 2022. Thank you for listening to Ik Chin With.